Digital rights management or DRM in gaming has been a hot topic for many years and it's something that I've covered on the channel many, many times before. Publishers say it's essential to ensure that they are making money on game sales. And to do this, they must implement DRM in their games in order to mitigate the spread of pirated games. But others like myself disagree. I think it's anti-consumer and it's actually a catalyst in many situations for piracy. Especially with poorly implemented DRM, the motivation to circumvent increases significantly. And in the worst case, DRM is responsible for games simply not working at all after the activation server has been sunset, or in the case of games that utilized SafeDisk or Securom, Microsoft simply blocked these games inside of Windows 10 and beyond. And the result is that many users look for pirated or cracked copy of games that have the DRM removed. Now, one such DRM that is fairly well known in recent times is Denuvo. Denuvo anti-piracy is especially egregious. Denuvo DRM promises the longest crack-free releases, and game publishers will typically implement Denuvo DRM during the first few months of sales in the hopes that their games won't get cracked during this time. And Denuvo itself is particularly difficult to crack because it's not actually an add-on to the game, the DRM effectively is a part of the game code, which means cracking the protection also means cracking the game. And it also means that no two Denuvo protections are the same. It's unique to each game. Now, Denuvo is always running and looking out for anything that may tamper the game being played. So by definition, it maintains running processes in the background. Now, many people have claimed that Denuvo hurts or slows down gameplay performance, but Denuvo has responded to this many times, saying that the anti-tamper has no effect on game performance and is not responsible for any slowdowns or crashes in the game. Now, in reality, this is really nothing but marketing speak because in recent days, it's been discovered that Denuvo DRM is indeed responsible for the slowdown and stuttering issues that have plagued Resident Evil Village on the PC. Now, for those people that may not be aware, Resident Evil Village on the PC runs fine for the most part on any medium or high spec machine, but as soon as you engage in combat, there is a performance dip when you attack zombies. And even worse in the game, when you get to the castle and start engaging with the maidens, the frame rate drops significantly, sometimes as low as 15 frames per second. It's a very obvious stutter. And this is something that I've seen Digital Foundry cover on their channel when they were looking at the performance for Resident Evil Village. Now, there was no clear reason for this. There was speculation that maybe it was due to shader recompilation or, or whatnot, but Capcom never really provided an explanation and they certainly never provided a patch to fix the issue. But as it turns out, we know now that the reasons why Resident Evil Village was plagued with slowdown and stuttering issues is a combination of Denuvo DRM and Capcom Anti-Tamper DRM that's built into the game. Now, how do we know this? Well, it's simple because a cracking scene group known as Empress have cracked the Denuvo and Capcom anti-tamper protection in the game, and as it turns out, the DRM was responsible for the stutters all along. Now, the cracking group Empress mentions in their notes, all in-game stutters, like the one when you kill a zombie, are fixed because Capcom's DRM entry points are patched out. So, most of their functions are never executed anymore. This results in a much smoother gameplay experience. And I took a look at a couple of YouTube videos, one in particular by someone known as Cat PC, where he compares side by side the game with DRM and the patched version by Empress, and you can clearly see the improvements. Now, the next thing that I tried was to test this myself. I do own a copy of Resident Evil Village on Steam, so I applied the Empress patch, and once again, during the castle encounter with the Maidens, you can see on the left-hand side that the frame rate completely tanks. But when I applied the Empress patch on the right-hand side, it completely eliminated the issue. And this is really all there is to say about this. The DRM 
really is hurting the end user experience. The customer that paid $60 for this game only to have a substandard experience. And it doesn't matter if you have the fastest gaming PC in town, these stutters will always occur. And it's completely unacceptable, Capcom, and you must fix this in a patch. It will completely ruin the experience for you. And I think if anyone still doubts that de novo or the Capcom anti-tamper DRM doesn't slow down games and it's something else, I mean, this is really an open and shut case. It does affect performance and depending on how it's implemented can really break the game. And I personally will never support garbage like this, but I'm always happy to signal boost it and call publishers out for ruining the end user experience. This is definitely unacceptable and I do want Capcom to take notice and provide a fix without having people download a cracked version of the game in order to play a game and have a good experience overall. Now with that said, I do want to say that there is some precedent already set that Capcom will eventually remove the DRM from the game. Now, if you take a look at Resident Evil 3 Remake, it released last year on April the 3rd, and it had its DRM removed, which was de nouveau, incidentally, in October of that year. Resident Evil 2 Remake released in January of 2019, once again using de nouveau, and it had its DRM removed in December of 2019. So Capcom will eventually come around and should remove this in a patch, but there is a very long wait for that patch or that DRM to actually get removed. And I mentioned earlier that the reason why publishers do this is simply just to have a grace period or a window of time where they can get as much sales as they can and ensure that their game doesn't get copied and pirated and spread around on things like torrent sites and whatnot during that time, really mitigating the spread of piracy. And look, I don't fault them for that, but at the end of the day, if it does affect the end user overall experience where the game literally drops to 15 frames per second during some encounters in the game, that is completely unacceptable. And I do want Capcom to go back and try to find a fix for this problem because it is completely unacceptable. And for those people that just bought Resident Evil Village on the PC, I would probably suggest you go back and get your money back or get a refund on that game because you are not going to be satisfied with, with what you see. And I was someone that took a look at it myself and I had the exact same experience. And when I applied the de novo anti-tamper crack or the, or the patch to remove that, it simply just went away. And I think at the end of the day, it's a really cool thing that Empress has done this. And I love the fact that these piracy and cracking groups, they're not the, you know, the big bad guy anymore. They're not the kind of the, the dark black hat, you know, bad actor that is involved in the gaming industry. They're someone that can really help the end user and the consumer have a good user experience. But we are going to leave it here for this episode. Let me know what you think about the egregious Capcom and de novo anti-tamper DRM that's found in Resident Evil Village. It's completely unacceptable to me, but let me know what you think about it in the comments below. But we are going to leave it here for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to put a like on it, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.